Amen. All right, open up your Bibles, please, to Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Yeah, welcome back, preacher. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come with it. Preach it. I am so thankful to the Lord for this church. If I was not AWOL, if I was not absent for the past weeks, I would not have seen more of the, your real strength. Real strength is shown when trial comes, right? Yeah. So I was able to see your true strength. Uh, finally, a church that's not dependent on the pastor. That's the greatest joy to a pastor's life. Usually pastors who are dictators and controlling and abusive, they find that as paranoia. To me, it is bliss. Why? Because I don't have you guys bothering me anymore. I can move on with my life. <laughs> I miss you guys so much. What a blessing. All right. Now, uh, don't get scared. I've come back with a vengeance. <laughs> Exodus chapter 4 and verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1. Uh, the passage talks about Moses where he was afraid of the calling of God. And God wanted him to take a big task, to take on the entire empire. Empire of Egypt. And Moses, he's like, well, who's my army? What's my weapon? I've got nothing. No one's going to believe what I say is true. Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. Why are you guys excited? <laughs> well, you know, if you got a blessing out of that verse just now, you know, Moses, he didn't have like the nuclear bomb on his side. He didn't have millions of people in his army. He didn't have the politics of the right kings and leaders to play along with. And he was slow of speech, slow of tongue. He wasn't a great orator. But God said, no, 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 you got something. Moses is like, what? God's like, what's that in your hand? It's a dead piece of wood. And, you know, I can't shoot a gun with this thing. And, you know, uh, it's not like something that I could use to conquer the whole world with a piece of stick. It's just a dead piece of stick. And God says, I'm going to use that. You know, uh, as a church, that's all we are, we are. It's just a piece of stick. You know, we don't have the millions that we have to build up a huge empire and ministry. We don't have the advantage of politics so that we can have certain leaders and city council officials on our side. We don't even have the money or the resources to hire lawyers to go through expensive cases against the government, like other churches do. We don't have the numbers of people who can support us as much. We don't have a lot of people on our side. Bible believers have always been a minority. But God's people have always been a minority throughout all of history, all of history. And yet, it is the minority. It's the small thing. It's a piece of stick that God has used to crush what? An entire empire. You know, if you think that God is going to use something big for His glory, then get out of here. You know what God has always done? I like to use the unexpected, the base things. Yeah, I'm going to use a piece of stick. You know, you're, you know what I am? The great Dr. Gene came. No. You know what I am? This, just a piece of stick. Yeah. But you saw the doctor and then the knowledge, the intellect uh, and the ministry and the power. Why? Because of the aura that surrounds that dead piece of stick. And that's the power of God. Amen. You know... How can this piece of stick give glory to itself? Look at me, I'm so smart. 
See, what a great ministry that I have. You know, we have all the money, so we can use this to glorify God and build up a greater kingdom. Who are you? You're a dead piece of stick. Who do you think you are? And then those kind of sticks, God's not going to use. If you recognize your condition, what you are, then God said, I'm going to use this for my glory. Sometimes a rod can hurt too. You know that? This thing is dangerous. You know that? You say, oh, it's a dead piece of stick. No, it's dangerous. I can beat someone to death with this thing. Right? I could do that. Now, don't get scared, all right? YouTube, please, okay? Don't think I'm a violent terrorist, all right? I didn't say the T word like one of our teachers did, all right? I'm just using this, okay? All right? I'm not going to beat someone to death, okay? Grow up, all right? Grow up. Sensitive people nowadays, right? All right? Oh, he pointed at me, see? He was going to shoot me, you know? But see, this thing can hurt. This thing can hurt. And it's, it's got enough oomph in it where God can get the job done. He can beat somebody with the rod and he can crush a whole empire. He can beat it with the rod. So the title of my message today, Beat You With a Rod. All right, let's pray. Father God, all I am is dust and ashes. I'm a piece of stick, Father. But Lord, you use this dead piece of stick to do wonders, not because of me, but because of you. Will you manifest your glory and prove your power once more to the, to the Egyptians today who are watching, to the Egyptians today who want, this, who want to see your ministry fall, who want to see this dead piece of stick cut in half. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll manifest your power to Egypt today for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You want the power, you start off at verse 3. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. You know what God wants you to do? Oh yeah, I got all the gifts, my plans, my goals in life. And of course I'm going to use it for the glory of God with my new job and money and no, 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 God said, cast it on the ground. What? But Lord, this is precious. This is, no, you're, this is all a dead piece of stick. That's what you've got. You know that? You know, you think that you got the wonders and that you got everything, but until you recognize who you are, what your condition is, then God can't use you. Do you recognize that all you are is a dead piece of stick? So God says, cast it on the ground. Lord, here's my dreams, my goal, my ambitions, everything that I have in life, because all it is is just a piece of stick, Lord. So I'll follow you. All right, cast on the ground. All right, you cast it on the ground. Lord, I lay my Isaac down. Lord, I cast away my dreams and everything that I have on your feet. Lord, I come down on the altar and I lay it down on the altar. And then guess what? God's blessing comes down on you and you get richly blessed and empowered. No, then a snake comes out. How many of you have came to a Bible-believing church and as soon as you grew up in a Bible-believing environment, started a Bible-believing life, and some of you people watching us online have started to get into that, and then you start to lay your Isaac down and lay your dreams and everything to the Lord, and then it was not a blessing. It was not like things were getting better, but rather a demonic snake came out, and the devil just tried to ruin your life, and then persecution rose up. Bad things started happening, and you're like, I didn't sign up for this. But that's what happens if you want to conquer Egypt, if you want the power, and even if you want God's blessing, you first need to give it up. You need to cast it on the ground because that's all you are anyway. That's everything you have anyway is a piece of stick. If you don't think so, that all that you have is a piece of stick, God will prove it to you at the judgment seat of Christ. You'll have a bunch of wood. You'll have a bunch of stick that will burn up at the judgment seat of Christ and say, see everything you had, your dreams, ambitions, plans, all it was is wood, yeah. hay, and stubble. You should have laid it down at the beginning. Otherwise, it will happen at the judgment seat of Christ. So you lay it down, but 
then you don't think about the next step. What you thought that was a sacrifice to the Lord and you should get a blessing? No, instead a serpent came out. And when that serpent came out, you know, the Christians, what do they do? Well, Michael the archangel, when he saw that serpent, the serpent can picture the devil right here. When the serpent comes out, Michael the archangel, he's way powerful than all of us. Like he could probably wipe us out with just a blink of an eye like that. But Michael the archangel, he did not even dare to bring an accusation against the devil. You know, we know that Moses, he faced the serpent and he grabbed the tail, but you have to understand this, that's not what he did at the beginning. If he just threw it on the ground and the serpent came out and he just faced it, charged it head on and then just uh, faced it onward, then he would have gotten bit. You might have said, why? Because he didn't, he charged and attacked without God's instruction. God says, no, you're not going to face it head on. You're going to have to grab it by the tail. That's when he faced it head on. You know, the thing about a lot of these modern day churches nowadays, their problem is that, you know, Satan, uh, he's so weak. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Because of Jesus Christ, we're more powerful than the devil. And then Satan, he's just a mangly old lion. He's a lion, but he's old and he's got mangling teeth. And no, he that those teeth are still sharp he's a powerful enemy and yes there should be a right kind of fear in there that hey this is a powerful enemy i don't want to be stupid enough to charge it head on when we attack the devil's kingdom it's so important that we don't have this uh wrong mentality that yeah we're gonna beat we're gonna charge hell with a squirt gun and stuff like that a lot of zealous christians have that in the beginning, but that is very dangerous because you don't know how weak you are and how strong that devil is. You're right that Jesus Christ is more powerful than the devil, but you're not. And wait till you're Job. You saw what devil did to Job. You think you can go through that? You got to watch out for that devil. Well, then how do we fight the devil? You don't fight it like, oh yeah, I'm going to beat you up. You, trust me, when you start doing that and it starts coming down, then you get discouraged and tired and then you go, oh God, you know, why aren't you helping me? It's because you charge him unwisely. You know how you uh, win your battles in war? You don't say stupid stuff, oh yeah, and do trash talk. Yeah, that's right, come on, I'll face you head on. No, you're just being so stupid where you amp up your enemy more and then the enemy's just going to charge you with everything it's got, and it's going to crush you. You know what you do in a war and a battle? You play smart. That's how you win wars, is with that enemy. You don't uh, egg him on to attack you, and you charge him head on. No, you use wisdom, and you go, how am I going to defeat this enemy? Look what God told Moses to do at the next verse. Verse 3, Moses fled from before it. Yeah, Anyone with common sense would do that in front of a devil, in front of a serpent, in front of danger. You don't charge it head on stupidly. You don't uh, dare the devil. You realize that, hey, I can't play dumb with this guy. I got to be smart. How do I win? Verse 4, And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. You know what Moses had to do? He can't just charge it head on and that's it. You're right that he charged him uh, up front, but he had to do it wisely. You might say, why? Because he had to pick it up by the tail. How do you pick up a serpent by the tail head on? You have to be smart about doing that. What happened? The Bible says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's why, because the devil finally turned his back. Because he stood his ground, the devil, that serpent turned its back, and then Moses saw that open opportunity and grabbed it by the tail. You know, when I talk, you know why I say, when the devil starts attacking me, I try to motivate myself, I'm going to go, a uh, one-up on the devil? What did I mean by that? What I meant by that was not as a foolish charge. If you do that, trust me, the devil, you're daring the devil and he will mow you down flat. 
What do I mean by I'm going to go one up more on the devil? What I mean by that is that's my tactic. If that enemy is going to keep making my life miserable, maybe he'll get off my back a little more if I tell him, hey, guess what? If you keep attacking me, I'm going to do one more good deed for the Lord. You know what I did for the past weeks while I was absent? Oh, I had to put one more level up, another level up, another level up, another level up. You know what? I'll just write a book on prayer. You know what? I'll have my boys to preach on this pulpit so that they can become better in preaching. You know what? I'll take time to plan my battles to build, uh, build up a bigger victory. Maybe if I wasn't absent that time, I wouldn't have come up with a lot of new things, huh? Maybe if I was just so preoccupied and busy as usual in the ministry, how could I take time to come up with more, one more levels, one more up on the devil? You know how you attack the enemy? You're wise. How did we survive in the Bay Area? We weren't stupid. We didn't go in front of CNN and say, hey, CNN. We didn't go in front of their headquarters and burn it down and say, yeah, that's what you deserve, you know, and stuff like that. No, we don't dare them on. Why? Then your ministry is going to get shot. You're going to get City Hall on your back. You're going to get CNN always on your back. They're going to go to your private lives dig up your history, and YouTube and Google will help them out on that one. So you're not stupid to do that. You know how we survived? We were wise. We stood our ground. We didn't turn coward or yellow, but we were wise. We're still posting publicly online. People around the world are still watching us. People around the world still getting under conviction and changing their lives. People around the world getting saved. People in our church are getting encouraged. Who would have thought that we would have a church in the Bay Area? Huh? 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 Yeah, that's sure one up on the devil, don't you think so? Okay, we're going to make you lose a church building. You're going to wander around for years and you're going to get discouraged and you're all going to quit. No, we just got stronger and we got a better one over here. You know how we do that? Wisdom. You know, you don't dare the devil. No, there's got to be that wisdom like, okay, watch out, be careful, but use that wisdom where you stand your ground and find ways to defeat the enemy and grab it by the tail. And that's the thing, that serpent comes at you. And then he's trying to make you all miserable and he's trying to destroy you financially, attack your homes, attack your health, and then attack within the church. And then when that serpent comes at you, you know what? It's not like foolish, oh yeah, I'm built for this, head on, come hit me. No, then you'll get hit hard. Yeah. You know what you need to do? You fall on your knees and pray and let the Lord speak to you and let the Lord tell you, hey, this is how you do it. Grab it by the tail. Wow. And you need to see that moment where you grab it by the tail. And when you do that, then you've overcome and then you're about to conquer Egypt. You know how this church ministry was able to produce much fruit for the Lord? We had to first go through the serpent's attacks. And it's by overcoming the serpent's attacks and using the wisdom that we can to keep surviving and standing our ground that we were able to conquer Egypt. You don't conquer Egypt just like that. You have to cast it on the ground first, friend. And then... You have to let that serpent come at you. And then you have to learn how to survive a serpent. Then you can pick up that rod and conquer Egypt. You know, uh, we got every disadvantage you can think of in the world, yet the Lord blessed it with such mighty fruits that God has not given to any other apostate all world powerful organization. Why a dinky little church like this that where we have every disadvantage in the world? You know why? You know why? You know why? Some people casted something on the ground, let the serpent come right at them, and then stood their ground and grabbed it by the tail. That's why we were able to conquer some stuff in Egypt. You ready? Until you do that first, we can't go through these next points. Until you do that first, we cannot go through these next points in these sermons and get the encouragement you need to conquer Egypt. The next thing I want to cover is verse 20 through 21. 
verse 20 through 21. The Bible says, And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And notice how the Bible says that word, it took the rod of God in his hand. Not just a rod, it's of God, rod of God. That's some piece of stick, man. And he says, And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. Look at that right there. You know what? Now God says, okay, it's a dead piece of stick. You cast it on the ground, you face that serpent, and you grabbed it by the tail. Now, let's see what this dead piece of stick can do. You know one thing that we can learn from this dead piece of stick? A dead piece of stick can conquer a nuclear bomb. This dead piece of stick can conquer every powerful system in the world. This dead piece of stick is more advanced and more fast and greater than all the systems of the complicated computer networks combined. It's a dead piece of stick. And God says, let's go conquer Egypt. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, we don't have a baseball stadium as our building. I know. Like Joel Osteen. And, it's, and I know that we're not in a conservative territory where we can have more freedom, less restrictions, and we can do greater things for the Lord if only we just moved out of California and migrated to Texas or some other place, right? And I know we don't have all the advantage in the world, but you know what? That's, a, that's what God uses, a dead piece of stick to conquer Egypt. You know what God wants to use? Yeah, I want you to stay right there in the Bay Area with every disadvantage in the world so that I can show off my power to everybody watching us around the world that there is a church that stands its ground and can conquer everything through just a dead piece of stick. Otherwise, how can we really magnify the glory of God if we're, if we're in Florida or Texas and then saying, oh yeah, our ministry has grown and God has incredibly blessed us? How can I really show off the power of God that way? Or, you mean I could show it off better? Oh yeah, you know, we led, we led uh, so far 40-something souls to salvation as we started 2022 in the Bay Area, in the Bay Area, in the Bay Area. Yeah, in your face, Egypt! You know what, that's, that's God showing off His power. You know what he did with Egypt? He just beat them with the rod. That's what he did. Yeah. Uh, we, we have every disadvantage in the world. YouTube, Google, and all these internet punks out there, the Silicon Valley overlords, that they can control everything, take away free speech. And you might say that, well, I can't preach and teach as much as I want to or use it for the glory of God. No, those are just serpents. And we've learned how to grab those things by the tail. And because of that, the Lord said, now, let's go conquer Egypt. All right, come on, come right here, YouTube. Come right here, Google. Come right here, Facebook. Come right here, Twitter. That's right, I'm going to beat you and beat you with a rod. YouTube, don't give me a strike. I meant that metaphorically speaking. You know, what, you know what I mean? We need the rod of God. Just God's power. God should beat them and beat them and beat them. I know we don't have the advantage of our information roaming freely throughout the whole world where they can watch us. And they can hear the truth. No, truth is shut down. Truth has been shut down because it's all CNN, it's the New York Times, it's all those liberal news media journals that dominate the platform and they just say stupid stuff all the time. They call it summer of love, peaceful protest, and just garbage and lie after lie after lie and brainwash you and brainwash you put the fear of man within you, the fear of everything within you, and then the dread and the hate of truth and Bible believers and trying to gather as a church to worship the Lord. And I know that those stupid news media, MSNBC, CNN, that whatever they say, it seems like it comes to pass and people willingly obey and listen. But here is just some preacher on a wooden pulpit preaching out of it old-fashioned book that's so out of date. Who's going to listen to that? God said, yeah, I got it ready right here. A rod! A rod! It's called KJV 1611. Come right here! CNN, MSNBC. Come on, Don Lemon. 
Come on, you guys, pull down your pants. You need a good spike curtain. That's right. Come right here. One, two, three. Come on. Yeah, let them, let them have Egypt. I choose a rod. I choose a rod. These idiots out there building up millions of subscribers on YouTube because they think they're funny when they're not. Colbert and all these idiots, comedians, and then they get all these positive comments and people laughing, joining their side and then believing whatever garbage that they say. Hey, let them have the comedy. Let them have Hollywood. I don't want none of that. Let Hollywood have its millions, its advantage, its platform. Let the suckers believe and watch whatever they say because God don't need Hollywood. All he needs is a rod. And he just takes that rod and says, All right, come right here, Hollywood. I'm ready for you. Charge! Come on, TV. I quit. God, all he needs is a rod. Let them have Egypt. We've seen throughout history. Look, nothing changed. You cannot defeat history. Nearly 6,000 years of human history, powerful kingdoms and kings have always come and gone. But there is one king that held a record. He never passed away. 33 and a half year old Jew who just died on a piece of wood? Still going on. Yeah, shut our mouths all you want. Guess what? His truth will march on. You can kill us too. You can torture us and persecute us. But guess what? God said, that's all I need. It'll still continue on. God said, I'm going to beat you with a rod. Yeah, we can do it, church. We can do it. We can beat them. We can beat Berkeley. We can beat Stanford. We can beat San Francisco. We can beat Silicon Valley. We can beat them. And all we need is a raw. And by the way, if none of you are going to join my side, that's fine. I'll beat all of them with a raw. I'll beat, hey, Silicon Valley, all these things, all these people. I'm going to beat you with a raw. Oh, yeah, you criticize me, put negative comments, troll us, report us, and try to do whatever you can to destroy us. But guess what? I'm going to still beat you with the rod, man. You can shut me off online, close my church building and everything, but guess what? I'm going to still beat you with the rod until they arrest me on the street corner and I'm by myself and I lose everything. You'll see some crazy old Asian on the street corner preaching out of the King James Bible, street preaching his heart out to the gospel so that hundreds can hear until they arrest me. Guess what? I'm going to still beat you with the rod. Put me in prison. I'll still beat you with the rod. I'm going to try to win souls inside there until you torture me and gag my mouth and put me to death. Guess what? My blood and my death, it will beat you with the rod. God will beat you with the rod. He will beat you and beat you and beat you. So church, uh, why do we get discouraged about disadvantages in life? Shouldn't that encourage us more? Right. I know I've been AWOL for a while, but these things should encourage us more. Wow! God just used a rod yeah. <laughs> to keep it going. And if we had everything good and nice, I can't really glorify the Lord. Yeah. I need those disadvantages, those attacks, those weaknesses, so that I can see how my God will overcome it. You know what's amazing? Is that our rod is not with blood and violence, like some of these idiots are around the world. And the government is soon heading toward there. And then no matter how much they persecute, imprison, fine, shut your mouth about the truth and persecute you and try to kill you, God's truth will still march on. Yes, sir. And he's still going to beat them with the rod. Yeah. And he will beat them and beat them. We're going to win. Amen. We're going to win. Because we got the Lord on our side. Yeah. Egypt cannot conquer God's rod, right. God's truth. His truth will go march, marching on. I know it's a piece of stick, but that's all God needs is a piece of stick. It's a piece of stick.
I want you to look at chapter 7, verse 12. Exodus chapter 7 and verse 12. It's amazing. It's a piece of rod, guys. Do you understand that? We don't have the advantage of power and tyranny like governments do. Uh Fining, imprisoning, scare tactics, and disguising it with love. You know why they keep calling it, we're doing it for your safety, we're doing it out of love and care for you? It's socialism. No, we don't use that word, you know. We're doing it for democracy. You know why they have to use those words? Because their actions don't show the love. Their actions don't show that they care. So they have to, all they could do is word it out. We don't have to word it out. By our simple actions, it shows. We, we are not the type of people who go out protest and violently kill people. We are not the type of people that are Calvinists and say, oh yeah, God's going to force you to get saved. No, we just, hey, walk out the door if you reject God or receive Jesus Christ if you want to. All we have to do is, you know, we don't have to like scream on top of our lungs with banners and sit down uh, outside all day, chain ourselves to trees and hug trees all day long to get our point across. No, we just have to take up a 99 cent King James Bible, preach on the corner. That's enough to get the job done. And then by our, isn't that amazing? Amazing. The Roman Catholic Empire and church, they had to build up their religion through torture, through forced inquisitions. Islam had to do the same thing, and that's why it's the world's gross, most fastest growing religion. They had to do it through bloodshed. You know how liberalism had to survive? They need schools. They need the colleges because they know that they'd be butt naked and they can't survive with those stupid professors studying PhDs and spouting their lives for them. They need CNN. They need MSNBC. Why? Because without them, they would pee in their pants and they can't control the people. They need CDC. They need WHO. They need the government. They need some officials to enact the rules and the law so that they can force their power. Guess what? We don't need any of that. We just have the love of Jesus Christ. And all we have to do is take that rod and yeah, I'm going to beat you with love. They get so scared. Isn't it amazing? It's called a chick track. They think this is a dangerous weapon. Can you believe that? They think this is a dangerous weapon. YouTube right now is probably giving me a strike for doing this. They think this is a dangerous weapon right here. It's, it's called freedom of speech. It's called the gospel. Oh, hate, hate, hate. We're going to die. It's thanks to you people. We're all going to get sick and die. It's called the gospel. We're not like some of you idiots going on comedy networks, needing Hollywood and news reporters and educated schools where we can rip off thousands of dollars from sucked up families who are suckers to that system. We don't need all of that so that we can brainwash the people. No, we just say, come to church. It's free. If you don't want to come to our church, you can walk out the door. It's called a church. Oh, oh, close it down. Close it down. You're going to kill all of us. You know what it's called? It's, it's, it's not like Facebook, Twitter, where both liberals and conservatives realize it's a dangerous tool. It's not, it's not technology. It's not powerful. It's called a book. King James Bible. Ah! And they scream like little children. And once they see, like, a bunch of people just walking inside a building and not, not doing anything where they're killing people, they say, we'll never forget January. We'll never forget January. It was a hateful day. It was a horrible day. We were all going to die. It's the end of the world. Wow. You see this world? What a strange world. What's, what is a piece of stick, man? You know why? You're scared, aren't you, of a piece of stick? Oh, it's just a small fringe of minority weirdos. You're scared, aren't you? For a majority who's so powerful, you're so scared. It's called a raw. And you're afraid that we're going to beat you with the raw. You know why? Because we dodged all your fancy machine gun bullets. We dodged all your swords. We dodged everything. But you can't dodge one little swing of our rod because your rear end was sticking out all that time. And we kept beating you and beating you and giving you a spanking. 
and all of you crying where I was when oh, he spanked me. He spanked me. Oh, it hurts. Lock them up, arrest them. Oh. It's amazing. It's called the rod. Put me a wall a couple more weeks. It's not going to stop the Lord. That's right. Amen. His truth will march on. That's right. That King James Bible lived longer than I ever lived before I was even born, man. What are you going to do? You can kill me, drop me dead. You ain't going to stop that book. Get textual criticism and pay thousands of dollars to learn that garbage too so that you can criticize and attack the King James Bible. Do that all you want. Guess what? That truth still march on. It's called the authorized version, 1611. And it sold billions of copies. Exodus chapter 7, verse 12. That's why they know how powerful this rod is. So what do they do? They go to verse 12, Exodus 7, 12. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. See that? The devil knows, these evil people know how powerful that rod is. Yeah. So they don't look at their fancy gizmos and their technology civilization. No, they want that rod. They want that piece of rod. Oh, Ronaldo, you still have that candy cane? Give that to me, brother. So then we're going to make it a little bit more fashionable. So and then they say right here, you know, this is so old and archaic. It's, it's so hard to understand. You know, it's called jealousy. You just want the King James Bible. You're just stupid and sad that you can't use these and thou, so you criticize it. So you try to get away with it by saying, you, 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 you. It's a you generation, you too. It's, that's why you messed up that way. So then they say, here is a, it has more color this time. Oh, oh, it's distasteful. These people have no love at all. Such mean-spirited, evil, weird, cultic friends who never graduated from theological seminary like I did. So look at this. Look at my rod. The Lord is in it. Our God is a sovereign God who predestinates His elect. And this thing has a little bit more grace to you because you're such a you generation. So you need a grace to you so you can feel better. It's all about you. Brother, it's about you. Look at the heart. Oh, it's all about you. It's you. It's you. Joel Osteen, your best life now, it's all about you. And I will smile to keep it going. You know, that, you know why? They're, they know they can't build up their glory through technology, government, civilization, and even their fancy schools in education. They have to take a rod. They know how powerful this is. Yeah. But the only way they can defeat that rod is try to update it a little bit more. And then look, it got a little bling bling right there. See, in our worship services, it's got lights that shine. With that rock concert and then those disco lights right here. Looks like Christmas every time you walk in. You know what? Let them have all the YouTube subscribers. I don't care. You're just jealous when you criticize these preachers because they have more views, subscribers, than you do. And you're just young, and you're just jealous. Why are you upset at me? Maybe you're jealous of this. Yeah. Maybe you're jealous of what I got. I got the truth. You say, I'm not jealous of you. Why are you watching me then? Yeah. Why are you watching me? I know you guys are watching me. Yeah. Oh, don't... Don't be stupid. We're not stupid. We look at the comments. We've seen trolls. We're used to this for many years. Don't fool me, buddy. Why do you have to mention about me in your videos then? If I'm not that important and you're not that jealous of me. Why do you have to put my name so you can build up more views, huh? Why do you have to mention about me? There's something I got that you don't have and you want it. So then you pretend 
Some of you suckers out there and you apostate preachers and YouTubers out there, you take what we got as Bible believers and then say, we have the same thing like they do, but it's just more loving. See, it's red right here. It's more loving and it's more fun. It's green right here. See, so we're more fun and loving. So subscribe to our channel. Come to our church. I had one of these Calvinist bozos, one of these anti-KGV bozos who declared himself to be a pastor, and he was wearing shorts and with his hat on backwards, looked like a rap star. I couldn't tell if he was a pastor. And I was soul winning somebody, and I was about to win that soul to Christ, and that bozo tried to steal my soul and chased away that soul into hell. Interrupted our conversation and says, oh, why are you using King James Bible? And then try to entice that person to come to our church. It's called River of Life Church. And walk right in. And we've got something wicked, evil. Amen. It's evil. Damn the soul to hell for that one. You know what? Jealous for what we got. Because he's never been out all day long, buddy. I've been out every time preaching on the streets. With my church and even with my church not there. I went out. Yeah. You didn't, buddy. You're pretending you're like me. Yeah. Sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ through your coffee talks and little table discussions and women sewing, yeah. sewing clothes together. Yeah. Those kind of meanings. And of course, there'll be a version in Bible reading you'll understand. Come on. Oh, yeah. Liars. You know what the Bible says? Aaron Rod swallowed them up. Yeah. There goes NIV. Chum, 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 chum. <laughs> KJV just eats it up. Yeah. There goes NASV. Yeah. There goes anti dispensationalism. Yeah. There goes Calvinism. No, 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 I'm the elect. God chose me. God don't choose you. Oh, liberalism, summer of love, your safety, and we're doing all this chunk, 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 chunk. Even lost people know you're a bunch of clowns now, and they're speaking out. Man, see, all they can do is imitate. I'll kick them. I'll keep kicking them. I don't apologize for that. All right, Exodus chapter uh, 14. We'll look at verse 16. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And then verse 26 through 27. Bless God. What a powerful rod. Perhaps the most famous event ever from the rod. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians and upon their WHO, and upon their CNN, and upon their MSNBC, and upon their Google, and upon their YouTube, and upon their Bidens, and upon their liberalism, yeah. and upon their NIV, NASV, and upon their grace to you, John MacArthur, Paul Washer, Living Waters of Ray Comfort, and upon their Joel Osteen and Bishop T.G. Jacks, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared and the MSNBC, CNN, oh, YouTube, and the oh. NIV and apostate churches fled against it. Wow, praise the Lord. But you know what's sad? The people, you know what the people thought about that? Look at what the people thought about this. In verse 11, and they said unto Moses, their pastor, because there were no graves in Egypt, why hast thou taken us away to die in King James onlyism, in dispensationalism, in a pre trib rapture, in uh, standing against the world in non-compromising, in street preaching, Bible-believing church. Wherefore hast thou, the pastor, who's a weird little guy, who's arrogant and unloving, dealt thus with us? And I bet you they waved their hands like this when they were talking. Hast thou dealt thus with us? 
like some of them are watching online right now. Oh, oh, their hearts are going like this right now, getting so upset, trying to report us in any way possible, trying to shut us down. To carry us forth out of my best life now. Carry us out of my loving, dovey people and that wonderful seminary that I go to and those Bible theological scholars. They're scholars, Calvinists, but they are scholars. Why hast thou carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve Grace to you, Calvinism, Lordship Salvation, CDC, WHO, YouTube, Google, Catholicism, Islam, and that we may serve them. Leave us alone. Get out of YouTube. I'm going to report you. We're going to try to tr troll on you. Just leave us alone. You're scared. You're really scared, aren't you? And you know what's sad? I could say that about the outside world, but man, it's sad even with our own people. Those of you who've watched us online for a while, you have that heart and attitude, sad. How have you dealt like that, Pastor Kim? And there's a more loving way and a better way to approach. You're like that. People in this church, you're like that. Because you, you know, guess what? We're not a perfect church. And the devil wants you to concentrate on the imperfections yeah. of saints rather than the sins of the lost world who committed 24-7 more than saved Christians. And then the devil wants you to go, why hast thou dealt with us? I can't come to church anymore because the pastor's that way. The church members are like that. And, you know, there were better ways to do this. We don't have a nice building. We don't have more loving people. At least the other church I went to, they followed up with me and they always cared about me. And then that's what you're doing. My friend, can't you see that throughout those imperfections of this rod where it's beaten and it's a piece of wood and it's not as good looks to you that this rod is a thing that's trying to save your life and drown out the enemies behind you and save you from wrong doctrine without apology get you to treasure a perfect book believe in a bible with no mistakes without apology to get into full truth and outside of that wicked world to live a holy, separate, sanctified life without apology. Wow. You know what? God just wants to split that Red Sea for you yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and save you and deliver you. Yeah. But yeah. you don't want it. Every time God tried to deliver you, you always tried to find some imperfection in that rod. Look at that. It's got a mark right there. Look at that. It's got a mark right there. And these rings are just not lined up right. And... Oh, it's beaten and it's about to split in half and we could do it better and you don't think about the miracles and the deliverance God is trying to get you out from. That's sad. I know you don't like what I teach, but when I teach it and then you got something wrong in your life, guess yes, what? You sir. need to be beat with the rod. Yes, Sunday, you know, you come in with that world flesh drowning you and you're kind of feeling guilty and bad. You know what you need? Yeah. On the altar. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. But sometimes our brains are so stubborn, you need somebody to whack it on the head once in a while. Yes, sir, yeah. You need to be beat with the rod. Good, right. You know what the Bible says about the rod? Thy rod... And thy staff, they comfort me. You know what the shepherd does with the sheep, with the staff sometimes? The sheep goes around the wrong direction. What does it do? It beats it. To get them back in the right path. If you don't like it, then I'll agree myself in this much. I believe this is 100% truth, if you don't agree with it. Gene Kim needs to be beat with a rod. I need church. I need the Lord. I need Bible-believing truth, even though it's unpopular and my flesh hates it. How many times have I wanted to shut down YouTube, run away from a ministry, try to play politics and get away from everything, run my own life? You think I want to live here in the Bay Area and everything? You're nuts. How many times have I wanted to get away from all that? But guess what? I need to be beat with the rod. 
I need that rod, no matter how unpopular this rod is. Exodus chapter 17, verse 5 through 6, verse 5 through 6. Some of you don't like this rod. It's hard, especially if you raise children, especially if you get married. What happens, this rod doesn't seem to work for you anymore. And the world becomes easier options. And the flesh doesn't like to be disciplined into trying to raise the family right. And it's harder to serve God when you're in a God-forsaken school you're attending. Kids grow up, they're Bible-believing. Once they go to college, they melt away real fast. Why? Because it's hard to serve God with the rod when you got Egypt all around you. It's hard to serve God in a Bible-believing way when you keep subscribing, watching a whole bunch of different channels that yeah. don't agree with each other and teach a whole bunch of wrong doctrines. Yeah. Because sticking to a Bible-believing channel is a rod. It's so hard. But you know what? I know be getting beaten with a rod is not good, but guess what? It's because that you got beat with a rod, you're able to drink. And you need to be beat to get that water. Look at this. Verse 5. What did God say? How to feed the Jews when they were thirsty. And the Lord said unto Moses, at verse 6, Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. Oh, it's, there's, there's got to be more easier ways, softer ways. No, you need to get beat. God, is this suffering necessary? Is this trial necessary? This health deficiency, this is so hard. Do I need, yeah. It's the only way. Suffering then pours out blessing. Oh, God, it's so hard to raise my children in a Bible-believing way when they're going to a public school and getting brainwashed by the world. Lord, is the biblical training the right way? Do I have to keep doing that, put rules on my children, spend time with them in this messed-up society where I don't have time for my children? Isn't this so hard? Yeah, no, you need that. You need that beat. So that the children can have that water that grows in the Lord and become good kids later on and not a burden to you in the future. I know, uh, man, we got the disadvantage of not a nice building. We got the disadvantage of the Bay Area. We got the disadvantage of no politics, no connections with other pastors and leaders. I mean, we got the disadvantage of not a lot of people in our church. We got the disadvantage of not uh, fancy lights and the electric guitar and the drum set that can make us love the Lord. We don't have those gay little boys on skinny jeans, jumping up and down like hopping bunnies so that they can attract the attention. We don't have that. What a disadvantage. We don't have Justin Bieber boys in our church to attract all the people inside our church. We don't have that. It's so difficult. We don't have all these programs like these other big churches have. What a disadvantage we've got. Uh, we don't have, we have the disadvantage of everything. The disadvantage of coming to church formal, dressed, women in dresses, men in ties, and oh man, what a disadvantage. Do we have to come like that? And yeah, you need to, you need that so that the water can come out and you can enjoy a good drink. What's that good drink? It's called a Bible Believer's Blowout! Featuring Wilson, Calvin, Terrence, Calvin, Aaron Kogel, Dennis Knowles. You know what that is? A bunch of people of so many different nationalities, age groups. Oh, we don't have the advantage of many people of my culture. We don't have the advantage of many people my age. We don't have many people of the, my own gender. And uh, look, you know what you saw at the blowout? There's a little child running around here, a grown adult right here, a sick person right here hopping on one leg right here, a person whose voice is about to give up the ghost but just running around and yelling his voice hoarse. 
Here's a Korean who's been serious all day long but started to run around. And here's an American that starts to run around. Here's a black person hugging a white person. you never seen that in BLM Lives Matter before. What a miracle. And what is that? We got the disadvantage. It's called a blowout. And bless God, when I see that every day, I say, man, what a great God. What a great God. What a great God. Different cultures, nationalities, age groups, holding hands, loving the Lord Jesus Christ. It's called a rod. It's called a rod. I'll, I'll pay for that, brother. I'll pay for that. Here's an extra. I'll be more careful. Sorry if some of you got scared. I didn't think it hit that hard. So I'll be more careful, all right? Thank you for showing grace with me. All right. But the thing is, is that, see, man, what a disadvantage we have. But the blowout is just such evidence of, wow, how did that happen? We didn't use programs. We didn't use gimmicks. We didn't build up connections and everything like that. How? How? It's called a rod. So, yeah, stick to the rod. Stick to the old-fashioned ways. Yeah, keep beating it. Keep beating it. That's good, preacher. That's right. It's unpopular. It hurts. But you get the water. Yeah. And guess what? When you drink that water, it sure tastes oh, good. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm loving that drink. And it makes you look forward to every Sunday. It makes you look forward to seeing your pastor again. That's a miracle. Yeah. Wow. I don't know why you guys like me. I don't, I don't know why. It's called, uh, I can't wait to fo fellowship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I can't, how? What? We're, we're different in cultures, aren't we? In yeah. thinking, age, yeah. gaps and everything. Yeah. How can we like, I can't wait to fellowship. You're drinking the water, bud. Yeah. All because you got beaten with a rod. Yeah. Yeah. But if God never struck that rock, you get no water to drink. All right, let's look at Deuteronomy 34. Let's wrap it up. Thank you for your patience. I'm going to finish it now. Oh, actually, I got two more passages. So 17 verse 9. All right, let me wrap this up quickly. Exodus chapter 17 and verse 9, and then Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. I'm not supposed to preach this long. I don't know why I'm preaching this long. I'll wrap it up. I, hope, I just want, to, I want you to be encouraged. I don't want you to be discouraged through all the trials, the hardships, and the attack after attack after attack. I want you to be encouraged. It's what we need. Yeah. It's what we, we need this. Yeah. I know it's a disadvantage. I know it's hard and it's not popular. And it hurts because you get beat. But man, it sure tastes good. Yeah, sure. Ah, there's something yeah. strange. It's so strange. Do all the statistics, empirical studies on the King James Bible. It doesn't make sense. You cannot, get you cannot get experimental proof, scientific proof on why the Bible just somehow makes you keep living for the Lord and give up your hopes and dreams. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wow. What a rod. But you can do that with Facebook, you can do that with YouTube, you can do that with CNN, the news media, the liberal schools. You can pull up statistics, empirical evidence as to why they attract their people. They need fleshly gains. They need power. All we need is the Lord. Yes, sir. With a beaten up stick. Exodus chapter 17 and verse 9 through 13. This will encourage you. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. What happened? The Bible says in verse 12, But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on. You know, here is the man of God holding up the staff because that rod is powerful. And it is needed to win the battle. But then that pastor, so heavy, Lord. I'm only one man, and I can't do it. Oh, God, it's so heavy. 
you know, the, you can't get one person in the Bay Area to keep beating up people with the rod. You know that? That's right. Hey, onlineers, you can't get one person on YouTube to keep beating someone th with the rod. You know that? Yeah. You know what we need? When this rod is right here, and my hands are heavy, and then here goes the man of God and says, oh, I feel like quitting. People think that I don't love them, and I, I think I am a little mean and a little strong right there, and oh, God, it's so difficult to pastor church. I, I don't think I'm qualified, and Lord, maybe I should tone it down a bit, and maybe I shouldn't teach that doctrine anymore, and then, and then here comes some church member that comes up and say, hey, pastor, come on, come on. No, 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 you need to teach that again, pastor. No, 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 I love that sermon. Maybe so-and-so walked out the door, but I need it, pastor. Come on, lift up that rod. We need you, yeah, yeah, get that rod. Yeah, pastor, uh, I know that so-and-so complained about the lack of resources in the church. The nursery is not that well. The Sunday school is not that well, but uh, pastor, we need that, we need that. Come on, come on, lift up your hand a little higher. You know, I, uh, I almost thought about canceling the blowout. You know that? I almost thought about canceling the blowout. Bless God. Thank God for those people. Oh, man, we need more of the blowout. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm coming back next year. Yeah, yeah, we need it again. Hey, where are we having another one? No, nah, maybe we should quit. I'm too tired. No, it's okay, Pastor. Come on, come on, come on. Do it. Amen. That's what we need. Uh, you know, to, imagine. You know what's going to happen if I tell this church all of a sudden, hey, church, you know, my preaching and my teaching is too pointed and too sharp. So I'm going to water it down a bit. Yeah, yeah. You know what, why I'm going to get the reaction from my church? Ugh, ugh. Guys, I'm going to water it down. This is too much. It's too pointed. How do you think you guys are going to react after that? <laughs> no, pastor. No. Don't you dare, pastor. I'm going to walk out of this church if you do. Don't you dare compromise. Keep preaching the truth. I'm praying for you. Here, I'll even pay you to keep going. Come on. Just pre keep preaching the truth. That's the kind of reaction I'm going to get from this church. I ain't going to get away with the NIV in this church. I ain't going to get away. Guys, guys, isn't this better? Guys, let's do it. Uh, you sure? No, it looks pretty. Guys, look, it fits me just right. It's my size. You want this? Yeah. I don't know why you guys like this. I don't know why you guys like this. What a rod. Yeah, you know what I need? I, son, we can't have Gene Kim doing this every Sunday. We need a Sean Lawler to put some honey over there and then just do this every Wednesday. Then we need a Tom Cho to come over there and beat them every Sunday. Then we need a Max to give them a little mercy and do 20 minutes of doing this one. Then we need a Ralph who goes a little longer and do one hour of this one. Then we need a Daniel Price who just needs to keep doing this one. And then Robert Garcia, hey, you bunch of drunkards and liquor guys, you need some spirit feeling. You feel the spirit now? Yeah, we need that. Thank God Gene Kim's not there all the time. What a blessing, man. Bless God. Deuteronomy 34, let's wrap it up. What a rod. The Christian life is hard, but I always tell my wife, we went through unspeakable pain together, but I always tell her this, it's been painful, but it's been never boring. <laughs> Sometimes it's sad, I would tell her, do you ever regret marrying me? Do you regret leaving everything behind to be in this ministry? It's just a piece of stick, that's all I got. But she said, no, my life's been changed forever. What a life, I found a new family now. I found a new thing to love now. I don't wanna go back to the old way. What a rod, what a rod. Deuteronomy 34 verse 12. Verse 11. 
in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land. And in all that mighty, what? It didn't say rod, but that's what it was pointing out. And in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. You know what the importance was? It's not a stick because all it is is a stick. Because God can use any other object, not a stick. You know what it was? It was the hand. It was the person holding the stick that God used. That's who God used, is the hand. You know what God wants in a, in a land of Egypt where you're in a total disadvantage, you have no advantage whatsoever, God says, I just need you, son. I just need one. Come over here and let me use you. And bless God, guess what? That person, God can fill one person so much with the Holy Spirit that the person can pass it down to another person. That's how powerful our God is. Notice it's by his hand, right at verse 12. Who got that? Who got the hand at verse 12 after Moses? Verse 9. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. Joshua got this next. He didn't need this. See that? Wow. He didn't need this. He needed, the, he needed God who was in that person. He needed what Elisha realized. Hey, Elijah. I need a double portion of what God has given to you. I need that spirit filling within you. God has used these hands whom I'm not worthy at all. God can use any of you or anybody else out there. I don't know why. You ask God. I keep asking why. I don't know why God would use me. But he did. Amen. And these hands have passed upon you. What will you do with that special power you've got in your life? Will you pick up a rod and beat some things with me? Well, pastor, I'm not like you. I can't beat everything in life. That's okay. Just beat up as much as you can. Beat up as much as you can. And pretty soon, you know, when you're going like this, you're like, this is fun. And then, <laughs> then you go, hey, I should do a little more. It comes naturally to you. Wow. Yeah, and then don't worry, I'm not going to beat everything. You think I can beat everybody? Nah. I'll never beat everybody. More wolves will come out. More apostasy That's will right. rise. Yeah. Right. 2022, we're getting our freedom back. No, it's going to come again. Yeah. And guess what, buddy? God will be ready. Yeah. And God will see you coming. Yeah. And God will be ready for you. I'm just going to do what I can before the rapture to beat everything that I can out there in our government, in our schools, in our cities, and in the false churches and the systems. I'm just going to keep doing this. Amen. And then when I can't do it anymore, and then I drop dead, and then the enemies laugh and they say, see, God don't use him. That was God's judgment. God will come down one day out of heaven with a rod of iron and say, that's right, boy, bend the knee. Yes. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep beating with the rod. And then I'll let my rod of iron come down one day and he'll take care of everything for me. But till then, I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to do what I can. Give Jesus a fewer things to beat, you know. I'll do as much as I can so that the Lord can be proud of me. Till then, I'm going to beat with the rod. Every head bow and every eye shut. Will you cast down your rod on the altar with me today?